Hi, welcome to Guy's Art Studio. Today I have for you an acrylic abstract painting inspired by fire. I'm going to talk all the way through the process explaining what I'm doing so perhaps you could have a go at yourself at painting this painting. I usually block in as much colour as I can at the background, so squeeze paint onto the canvas, brush it around. It's quite thin, but uh, I'm doing vertical and horizontal brush strokes to cover the canvas as much as I can to get rid of the white canvas. I put a few marks on the canvas just with a pencil. Um, it's just to remind me to keep points of light or dark shadows, points of interest. Not in all the thirds, but to bear that in mind so I don't forget it. I'm continuing to add more paint here. So use cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and titanium white. At the moment, I'm just using the acrylic paint on its own. I haven't added anything to it. Although I wash my brushes out with water, I usually rub them on a cloth so I don't go back onto the canvas with water on my brush. It'd be a very small amount. So we just started the painting here, so obviously I'm doing the background layer, blocking in. So whatever is in the distance in the illusion is blended out. So I'm I'm literally adding on paint as quick as I can and blending with a brush, a soft brush, soft, dry, clean brush, which you rub on a rag as you go. So here I'm adding some modeling medium, acrylic modeling medium with a palette knife trying to build some texture up in the background of the fire for this abstract image. Like using modeling medium for that. As you're putting the paint on and rubbing it off, it creates nice textures and patterns. Using a bolt there to move it around. So when you're painting, you don't have to use artist tools. You can use anything at all to push the paint around push the modeling medium around. So to paint this painting, I had a photograph of a fire, basically a fire in a fire pit with some logs on it. And I was just glancing at that to give me some direction, some points of interest. Cadmium red going in.
just blending and adding paint and adding layers with different size brushes. So the modeling paste here is still wet so I'm keeping away from it at the moment obviously it's going to mess up the patterns that I've put in if I touch it with a brush. cadmium red here and van dyke brown continuously adding in points of interest with the paint, darks and lights, I think we've got orange I've used in this as well, we've used an orange as well as mixing an orange, just adding it on and blending it and just every time you do this you add another layer to it, don't expect to get where you want to be with the painting straight away. You've got to keep adding layers, keep going with it. We've got a bit of flow medium that I'm using with this as well, which is pre-bought acrylic flow medium, which I'm mixing with the paint, just helps it move a bit better. Bit of white, bit of red.
So here I'd noticed some really interesting pieces on a log while it was burning. Get some nice crisscross shapes in it, so I was adding that in. I haven't waited for the modelling medium to dry here so I'm being very careful not to disturb it. So this point of the painting I'm still inspired by the fire pit fire that I'm looking at and painting an abstract image of a fire. I've added a bit of black as well to the palette, the looks of it. So we've got black, Van Dyke brown, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, orange, titanium white, flow medium, printing medium, modeling post. adding in some all sorts of interesting lines that I can see on the log on the photograph that's burning. The white in the photograph was white hot. So I'm doing a mixture of, so it's, I guess there's two types of blending you can do with acrylics. It's wet and wet so you get the wet colour, you get the wet paint onto the canvas and get another wet colour next to it and blend wet and wet with the acrylic but there's also dry blending as well as the paint's drying and using a dry brush you almost dust dust the brush over the top very lightly and very softly blend as it's drying so a dry blend so I've used a mixture of both on here and when the modelling paste is dried later on you'll see me do it dry over the top so you go over with a very dry brush, dry paint and it picks up on all the highs and lows ridges on the modelling paste.
I'm picking out bits and pieces here and I would say putting shadows down the side of them even though nothing's real on this painting it's abstract just picking out shapes So all the time I'm adding in shapes, highlights, putting shadows down the side of them. I'm looking at the picture of the file that I've got, but I'm not copying it. I'm looking at parts of the picture, finding interesting parts and then adding it to the image. all the time pushing parts of the image backwards and with details bringing other parts forwards. This is white paint that I'm adding now, not modeling medium, but I'm laying it on quite thick. So you've got a mixture of blended soft, flat background, and then adding on thicker paint on top of that to start adding up the layers. All the time trying to add depth to the painting So every time you paint over the top, you don't totally cover it very often. I mean, sometimes you do. Sometimes it gets totally obliterated if you want to choose to do that. Other times you're just adding a bit of paint over the top and there's a little bit of what was underneath that still shines through. And this is gonna add depth and quality to the painting. This time the palette knife is around the end on it, as opposed to a square. So I'm changing the brushes, I'm changing the palette knives, sometimes a bottle, sometimes a tin can, sometimes a plastic bag, to add lots of different effects. I'm not painting the painting with the same item all the time. Sometimes it's blended, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you've got a sharp line darks and lights and it's a mixture of all of this that makes a painting that creates a good painting.
Another little tip I think as you're going along, I like to paint the outside edge of my canvas so I'll do it as I go along so that the edge of the canvas will change as we're going through it. You just saw me there rub the painting with a towel so I've got a towel, a rag that I tend to dry my brush on. But I love the effect also when you get the towel on the canvas and you give it a rub and you see the texture of what's underneath come through. You get some really interesting patterns and textures. So going back in with a blending brush here. Decided I don't like certain parts of it, so they're getting covered over and blended out. Now I'm measuring across a third here, a third and two thirds, so third in, third in, making sure I have something special to look at, some point of interest, maybe a, a bit of a vertical line, horizontal line, just adding in and making sure there's something interesting in the thirds. I'm just putting a point of interest in, in one of the thirds. finding edges to pick out and then blend back from those edges.
So I think at this stage I suddenly started to see that there was a boat shape coming through the fire. And I'd actually been drumming in a group at a Viking boat burning a few weeks before. So I guess that's what made me think about it. So although I'm not actually making it a Viking boat burning painting, there's definitely some inspiration there that helped me conclude the painting. shadows and edges on highlighted parts that I've spotted starting to bring form to an image that doesn't have any form. to paint something and nothing at the same time yet create points of interest that hold someone's imagination when they're watching This is another part of the painting that's a third crossing. So third up, third in from the left. And I'm trying to put a point of interest in here. Something else to look at, draw your attention. wasn't sure what to do with this bottom left hand side I decided to put some straight lines in to stop 
the eye being drawn off of the page in that blank area. But later on you'll see that I'm not happy with that and I paint over it. That's all part of the journey of the painting. For an artist, painting a painting is usually a bit of a roller coaster ride of highs and lows. you can see I just didn't like it so yeah that went put some cadmium red on it and made it disappear I think this is the point actually when I spotted it looked a little bit like a boat so then there's a choice to be made. Am I happy with it looking like a little bit like a boat? Or am I not happy with that? Because I've been to a Viking boat burning, I decided I was happy with that. So just added a few little shadows here and there to suggest it was a little bit more like a boat burning. I'm loving the effect of the Van Dyke Brown with the cadmium red has some great effects. And when you rub it off with a towel, it almost gives you that sort of leather look on an old leather chair or something like that, or a seat in a car. Some really nice interesting patterns putting the towel on, taking it off.
So the modeling medium has dried now. And I'm just rubbing off, attempting to rub off and see what will rub off off of the me modeling medium to pick out some highlights with the towel. Just suggesting maybe a vertical line which may or may not be a mast. It's totally uh, abstract anyway really this image. If someone wants to see uh, a Viking boat burning in it they can. If they just want to see a fire in it, they can. Or even anything else. Perhaps you can see something else within the painting. Thank you very much for watching this slow abstract image being created. If you've got any questions, send some questions and comments and check out some of my other videos on Guy's Art Studio.